Well, let's now take a deeper look at these Spanish figures and also look ahead to the raft of GDP numbers we're expecting tomorrow from Germany, France, Italy, and of course the Eurozone as a whole. Well, to help us do so, I'm joined by the stu in the studio by one of Société Générale's chief European economists, Klaus Bader. Uh, Klaus, thank you so much for joining us. Now, it does seem the picture is pretty dire overall. We have some economies better than others actually coming out of recession. Spain is a worry. Spain is absolutely a worry um, because it's not only been hit by an external shock, which was one of the principal things that went wrong in the European economy, it also has significant domestic problems, and you mentioned it, uh, the housing market in particular. But I wouldn't get too carried away. Um, Spain is uh, definitely experiencing one of the longer recessions, and it's experiencing uh, the worst labor market adjustment anywhere in the euro area. Those are clearly bad things. However, when you look at the peak to trough decline in Spain, it's actually been somewhat smaller even to date um, than that in Germany. So in some ways, um, the recovery in Germany is also in part a function of the brutality of the downswing that was expected previously. Now, Klaus, we can't, of course, overrule anything. I mean, tomorrow we're expecting GDP figures from most of the Eurozone. What happens if one of them is still in contraction, like Germany, like France? Does it mean that effectively we're still in recession? No, absolutely not. I mean, the euro area is, of course, judged uh, on the basis of its aggregate, just as you wouldn't uh, assume the U.S. economy is in recession, even if, for instance, California, its biggest state, was uh, was in recession. Um, and Spain's problems are clearly not connected to anything having to do with monetary policy. In fact, Spain is benefiting, being particularly elastic to short-term interest rates, is benefiting from uh, the policy of the ECB. Um, so, no, I would definitely say that the euro area economy has left uh, recession behind, um, and the prospects are also that Spain will return to growth, though probably not until next year. Are you still concerned, though, about France and Germany? Um, not immediately. I mean, I wouldn't say that these economic recoveries are self-sustaining in the sense that they could stand, um, that they could survive if uh, monetary and fiscal policy exactly was suddenly unwound. Um, and yet, at the same time, there is a healing process going on um, and a substantial amount of adjustment has taken place. Are you concerned that if these stimulus are left on too long in these economies and central banks will actually have to take some kind of measures which they don't want to, they're not ready for. Interest rates getting higher because governments are spending too much. I think that's a prospect that is far in the future. It is possible, um, but I think it lies far, far in the future. Um, in fact, um, I'd say that uh, while the prospects for 2010 are now reasonable, we're probably going to see growth something like 1% uh, in the euro area. The prospect for acceleration beyond that into 2011, for instance, are not good at all. Um, and this is in particular because we know that the fiscal stimulus will come to an end. And at the latest, it's going to cease to be a positive force in 2011, it could very easily be a force of contraction in 2011. In, the inflation outlook is, uh, if anything, worryingly low. Um, in the, the ECB's inflation target is going to be far undershot, not just in 2010, but also in 2011. So I don't think that there is a case for raising interest rate or expecting interest rates to be increased until uh, 2011 at best. Yes, not any time soon. In terms of the currencies, how much will Europe suffer from a higher euro? Uh, it's, it's, of course, not helpful. Uh, I mean, any analysis shows that, of course, exports are principally determined by the growth in export markets. Um, the euro, however, does mean uh, that Europe is going to find it difficult to defend market share. Um, and what is, of course, particularly unhelpful is that some of the currencies which are seen as particularly undervalued, and when you say that, everybody thinks of the Chinese currency, well, that's, of course, been depreciating against the euro. So it's not just a, a story against the developed market economies that the euro is a appreciating. Um, it's a general problem. I mean, the shock from the exchange rate is really more in the rate of change. And the rate of change isn't dramatic, but it is strongly positive, and that is not a helpful factor and something the euro area really doesn't need at this stage. Klaus, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Of course, we'll be watching those GDP figures coming in from Europe tomorrow very, very closely.